that like the all the intro videos that I do at the beginning of the course um, or the beginning of class, I will record and screen share so that you don't have to be like cardboard, or you don't have to. And the recording aspect is awesome because uh, you can just access this link when you're, you know, if you, you know, you have a week to do every lab, and if you, you know, don't work on it immediately after lab, you might forget some stuff. Um, let's see. Okay, actually, let me not do that so I can tell how many people are in. Okay, eleven people there. Um, let's see, what should we go to first? Yeah, so pre-lab quizzes, um, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes before you come, or you can just come here 30 minutes. It doesn't take 30 minutes. You can come here 10 minutes early and do it right before you come here, um, like before you start the lab. And then when you, like, um, obviously you can't finish the lab before in 30 minutes. Um, so like the, when, you know, when you do lab two, that day, lab one is due, lab three, lab, you know, lab two is due, and so forth. Um, the, the annoying thing I'm mentioning here is like, for instance, if I go to uh, assignments and I click on, let's just look at the pre-lab quiz one. Okay. The due date is not correct. Um, this is just to prevent, um, like, because it's like, Really don't care that much. Wait, uh, this is really late. Um, right? What's next week? Oh no, it's not that late. So, like in theory, it's actually due um, the seventh because, like, you um, you know, you want to know what you're doing in the lab the lab you get there. It helps because, like, sometimes it's a lot to do in lab, and if you don't get the data in lab, like, you can't you can't run the lab. Um, so, so like, like the, the lab, uh, pre lab, pre lab, we do before all the all the Tuesday sections. We have yeah. eight, people, eight people. Did everyone get the link? Um, um, is, it, is it working for everyone? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, in theory, I could edit all of these assignments to change them to exactly seven at like. What time does this start? Eleven thirty. Like I would, in theory, I did that last year, and it took me like days. <laughs> There's so many assignments, um, and you you can't change them in math. So because I like we are two sections, it's like a hundred assignments. Um, not like these dates aren't correct. Um, and then what else? Oh right, the assignments, so the lab reports. They mention something. Oh, these are a little bit new. Um, abstract wasn't there last year. That's why maybe he updated that based on what I recorded. Um, the data, yeah, so you, you upload whatever you're working on. So for instance, let me um, show you. Um, hide meeting controls. We'll go to 121. Geometry lab, and then you go down here to equipment, and you click on this. So this will bring you to a Google Sheet, which is just like Excel, all the same command, everything. everything. You make a copy of it, and then you have everything set up. You don't need to make an Excel sheet; you just fill it in. Um, and so yeah, this is um, do with your lab report. So like when you when you do the assignment. You click on it and then you upload a PDF of your lab report and uh, your data sheet, which you just you know file, uh, download as uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, make sure you do it as uh, you know PDF as a lab report, but Excel as uh, for Google this you know sheet as an Excel because if you do that as a PDF, yeah, I can't see any. It's like it's like I would be able to, for instance, let me do. Um, let me show you what mine looks like. My geometry, geometric, geometry. For instance, uh, if you submitted it as a PDF, I would only see this, but I wouldn't be able to do this and click on it and see your formulas.
which is like if you have an error, I, I could I could look at this and tell you what the error is so that you don't do it next time. Um, let's see what else. But yeah, there's obviously there's much more. Um, obviously, this is good to look at, but um, the the lab rubric is much closer to what I actually do. Like what I do is I take my lab rubric that I showed you, I delete everything except the categories. So like I keep title page intro apparatus procedure analysis calculation or whatever discussion questions i'll talk about that in a second and then conclusion and then like i keep the percentages and everything and then i just i give you comments on like what um like what went well what went wrong um and then i like i grade according to those like little categories um the annoying part about grading is um if you look at that uh, one point one actual page, and these pages that I'm clicking on right now, you can find um, in Rich's announcement. So, like, not mine. Uh, down here, this is like Rich's announcement that goes out to all of them. Um, so, if you put to the the actual homepage, you can expand this and see what the like. Uh, this isn't again. This isn't how I graded either. Um, uh, like all, all of two, three. I don't even. I don't grade. Like it's just expected that you like if you, for instance, if you don't attach it to your spreadsheet. I'll pick up on the like analysis section because I don't know if you actually did it. Like I don't know if it's like yours or like if you understand like how to use it. Um, but. So I guess, I guess that that is, that is just like I, um, that's factored into my analysis stuff. Um, but this is the, what I really wanted to mention. Um, it's super annoying that I tried to get it changed last year to be less, like, I don't know, five or 10. But the annoying part is like, I can only grade 85 points, but then 15 points is like this lab quiz. And to add it together, that's your grade for the lab, um, which is annoying. Um, the how I deal with that is like I do things percentage wise, so you get a 94, and then I multiply like 0.94 uh, times 85, and then that's your score out of 85. And then Blackboard automatically adds it to whatever you got on pre-lab quiz, and then that's your actual score. Um, what's nice about doing this in person um, that I, that I realized because I taught online over the summer is that at the end of the course. Um, I, I was graded everything by then. Um, it's usually like, like this is fall, so I usually have everything graded by. Actually, let me look at the schedule. If the last lab for us would be the 30th, I, I mean, it would be due like, I don't know, December 5th or something, or 4th, 7th, 6th or something. I try to get like as soon as that is due, I grade everything because like obviously I have minus two and like the you know ten the ten to fifteen reads. So like all these students are like I don't really care um, as long as it's not like weeks late. Like if it's a day late, I don't really care. Um, but these these dates are important. like the the you know final two dates because I grade everything like that you know the. For instance, the six or something. And then, so I get all your grades back. Um, and then Rich will take all the grades from 121. So, like, there are six sections. No, I wouldn't have. Um, I have four sections. There are three of us. There are 12 sections. And he does like rounding or, or like serving based on the grading of the other side. So that's the, like, because some of the will, will give everyone everyone and that messes up everyone. everyone. Some of the will be like, give everyone 50 and that match is not fair. So what he does is like, he, because we have TA, he um, puts everything in a giant spreadsheet with some wizardry, I don't know how he does it. But um, one thing that I was really hard on is like, Always, always having bell curves, curves like on my grading, 
uh, well, I mean, I felt that I try to do like a triangle upwards. So it's like the least amount of people have 70 and the most amount of people have 90s and 100s. Uh, but I'm in general, all of my semesters, I was really good at grading so that once the richest curve happened, you go up. So I guess that means I'm much greater, but at the end, it means you, you know, I think it was like one point mostly, mm -hmm. everyone went up. Um, then what I do after that, which is really nice, um, I think the online version did that too. It's just that I don't have a say in it afterwards. Whereas now with Rich, um, he does that curving and then he sends it back to us and says, so these look you. And then I say like, I highlight all the like 89, 79, and I'm like, no, just give them like 80 or give them a 90. Like I try to, if you're on a board of a letter grade, I always like round up. Um, uh, yeah, grading. Okay. Um, what's next? Um, we just put Excel. Any other questions from Lab Zero? What else did I cover there? Um, Latex stuff. And depending on the lab, um, I will be getting to. So I wasn't, wasn't, wasn't about it. in one grade three because it was my first year of my PhD. I'm in my second year now, um, so I'm a little bit better. Um, my videos. Um, there are only two videos from 133. Um, there is 134. All of them are there for 134. Oh, okay. So lab, uh, lab, that's not lab. Uh, that's lab two, I think. Pendulum. The acceleration. You guys don't do the pendulum lab, really? Okay, well, I guess there's, there's just one uh, standing one. Hopefully you do that one. Yes, okay. So, yeah, never mind. The last, the last, 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 last you can, you know, look ahead that one. Uh, I guess we don't do the pendulum lab. Um, but I will, what I do is as soon as, like I'll show you in my class yesterday. Um, where is it? Last night, I sent them an announcement that was the Zoom recording, which is what we're doing now. So I send that to you after every class because this is based on my laptop, and you guys can just use it all the time. And it's quicker. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll include the discussion question. So that is at the very bottom of the lab reports or the lab manuals. Sorry. So all the way down. Basically, it's like, like this, this is, is the theory of what you're using. You use these formulas in your Excel sheet and stuff. Procedure is like physically what you do. Um, mentioned here is um, is something I think is given yesterday. It, it might be a little bit important. Um, I tend to do things like I would, for instance, I would do part one of the procedure, and then I would scroll down analysis and do part one of the analysis. The reason I do that is because if I did something wrong measuring the data and I did the analysis, if I measured something wrong, then the analysis is useless because it's it, like my, my data. So I try to, you know, do part one, part one, part two, part two. But given how, how um, well, I mean, hopefully us having more time and having this last year will give you more um, uh, like it'll, it'll make you guys be a little bit more prepared uh, for um, lab one. Um, so hopefully it's not an issue. Uh, but the other option is to just do everything physical, part one, part two, and do all the procedure. Because in theory, the analysis can be done at home, whereas the procedure cannot. Um, the issue with that is, and I, I think it's um, an issue, you can collect all this data, and if you Collected something wrong, you won't know until you get here. And so then you have to go back to you know part two or whatever. Uh, so I, I personally like doing part one, part one, part two, part two, um, and doing that. Um, let's see. So the main the main point uh, of this lab one is error error analysis. Um, what does it mean like if you use use 
this ruler here. Um, so here, I'll take a picture. Um, you have a ruler that is in seven hundred. Right here, it says, and then, and then, and then, and then, so that that means that this is a centimeter and we need small things in our Miller building. If I have some rectangle that I'm measuring the length of, I don't know if you're trying to probably. Um, if you have something that you're measuring up there, and you want to know what the uncertainty of doing that measurement is, that's not something we'll talk about it in a second that you get from the error PDF. That's something that you, you get from your adults. So, so I'm, using I'm using this thing, the smallest small batch, batch I can do is a millimeter. millimeter. For instance, For instance if I were to measure this, I would say, say I told you I'm not scale, scale obviously that's a huge view of the actual actual interest. But if I'm looking, looking, looking at this, you guys don't have them in your real life tables. It's really, it's really, really easy to say that it's uh, uh, five, five, five point, 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 point or, or uh, so this would be zero, zero, zero point seven seven. If I measure anything, so that zero point seven seven, it's a totally legitimate measurement. I think that your units don't matter not really, really in class. class. Um, the only time it does is when you use like gravity, because gravity, 9.8 meters per second. If you use one of those, you're going to mess up something uh, because you need to you would need to convert it to match up. Or you can convert gravity. You, you need to convert one of them. You need to either match up that way or they need to match up. Um, anyway, back to uncertainty. Um, if, that, if this is actually, you know, to scale, I can't. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. I thought I muted myself. I didn't know I did that. Oh, it's because I'm about to hear my Um. Uh, yeah, so if I look at these things, I can't tell the difference between one, like if a little piece a of little cardboard, piece cardboard is like right there, right there, the cardboard is not, you know, the needle point, so it has kind of like some fuzziness to it. So, so when I was missing this last half, I kept counting the point point, point something. If I was going to do that, if I read my meter, I would keep it 7 7 and not 7.1. Um, so, so what, what that means, means is, is, if I write, I write seven, 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 I didn't I write, write eight, eight, because I wasn't sure. So, so, so you're certain uncertainty in this would be one, one, four, four, four three, 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 this, this, like one, one. Right. So that's how, at least for that, that's how uncertainty works. And it mentions it in the lab report, um, like with your uh, scale. If you turn your scale on, um, another actually thing that would have helped them yesterday if I told them, uh, mass is in grams. These scales have different units. So if you turn it on and it says ounces, don't use that. Or it says liters or whatever, grams in mass. Um, the other uh, thing to note, um, a lot of the time, Force, the force is in is newtons. That is not what's called an SI unit, it's made up of other units. Force is equal to MA. The standard unit of units of the force is, force a, is a, a unit, a unit of newtons. newtons. It's the unit of, unit of force. Mass, that's not that's a unit not. Piece. mass, 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 mass. The standard, the standard unit, unit of mass, 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 mass is kg. So if I do, I do uh, uh, 
this little symbol right here, right here where you can take back and back it, and that's how I want to do it. SI. Standard international. And then acceleration. Same thing. Gravity. 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 Um, uh, this lab, we're not doing any more courses. Don't go keeping things in the RAM, RAM, totally fine. RAM, 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 Let's see, what else? And then the really hard part, um, uh, that's pretty essential. The, the main goal of this class is, you know, how to do science, not necessarily physics. Um, why is my mouse not working? Sorry. Um, send to itself. Let's see. Um, Mini, I find there we go. That's what I wrote on the board, as you can see it. Um, and you know, now that this is recording, I don't know why my computer does that. It's just so old. Like, every, did you see what I'm talking about? Like, when it opened, it like the color changed. It's so old. Um, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, you can pause the video and you can look at that if you're ready. Um, in terms of other uncertainty, let me walk you through what we're doing. So this part, measuring with our eyes, centimeters, centimeters, notice I'm only doing point something. So later on, uh, why did I do point two? Um, oh, that was because it was a circle. So if a circle doesn't have, you know, uh, you know, easy edges. So I was like, I'm, I'm more uncertain about that. So it's, it's very up to your discretion when you measure things, how good your eyesight is, how good your ruler is, whatever. Um, so here, this is me using that formula for density. There. Here, the density. Usually, like in chemistry, maybe you're more familiar with mass over volume. Here, we're just using the area density. We're assuming that our bricks of cardboard are 2D. Um, and then, so here is just, I'm, I'm, let me actually uh, explain this a little bit because people were not super sure how to use Excel. So let me just um, clear contents. Um, so if I want uh, the density, which is the mass over the, um, uh, over the area, what I do is I type the equal sign. So I'm in the cell, I type equals, and then I use my mouse and I click. So there's no, there's no typing, there's no writing. And in general, you see no calculation. So you do not need to bring a calculator to this lab. You, you shouldn't be using your phone. I mean, you can use your phone to text people, but like don't use it for calculating because you lose information. You, you can't, like you can't put your phone and it doesn't and have a history like a TIA or whatever. So you, you can't put that in your lab, but you can put this in. Like it's so, so equals the mass divided by, so I'm clicking the little um, question mark sign with the slash on it. And then area, and if I click enter, it gives me it. And then I can click on this and you see this blue dot down here, clicking and dragging, it does the rest of it. So now if I read this, you see the, 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 the column or the row, E5, E6, E7, it's just seven. It's doing the same thing for all. And average is actually something built into uh, Excel. Let me clear it and show you how it works. I collect the equal sign. I start typing the word average. You see that I can find this function here. 
And then it opens the parentheses for me. We'll the parentheses in a second. Every time you, you open a function, you need to start with parentheses and end with parentheses. And so now I can just click and drag. I'm selecting all these things. Let go. Close the parentheses. Uh, shift zero. Clicking enter. And now I have an app. So here is our first um, encounter with really hard uncertainty. So what we do is we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the left floor and we click on guide and uncertainty propagation and error analysis. And we have this giant document. Don't be scared by it because you don't use all of it. All the way, so let's go to basically useless, 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 useless. Well, not useless, but not immediately useless. Uh, useless. So this is your this formula is your for average. average. This, this is, is a measurement. measurement. So that would be like yeah. my x1 is this, my x2 is that, my x3, four, and five. This is x bar. So that's my average of all those things. And if I want the uncertainty of the average, yeah. I have a big yeah. mess formula. So what this, what this means, means is I take, take the square root, root, the difference between each of the measurements and the average, average squared, square, all of them. All of them. All, all over, over the number, the number of, of x and i, I have. So you see here, some number, number n times. N I'm doing the same quantity. quantity. So, so for me, me, I have five of them. So n is five, that's five, that's four. So my denominator is four. So let's look at, let me do a side by side for you. Make this another window so that you know what I'm doing here. Typing that in Excel is not uh, very hard. Uh, to learn, learn, but you will get it eventually. Let me uh, start over. So the first thing I'm going to do is type equal, and then I'm going to use a function called square root. I'm going to start typing square root right there. It opens the parentheses for me. And the first thing I notice is that there's a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to type another set of parentheses. In that, inside that one, we go the numerator stuff. I'm going to divide, do a denominator. And then that's all I need. So I'm closing the uh, parentheses. So this is all inside the square root. And then inside the numerator, I have a bunch of weird stuff. I have another thing. Uh, I'm doing shift six here to the square, and then typing the letter two plus. And then I'm going to copy and paste that. Copy and paste is uh, either Command C or Control C, depending on what Mac or PC. And then Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, delete that extra plus. Um, do I have everything in the numerator? Yes, because I started with these. You see how Excel is highlighting these things? So that means that's all inside the numerator. And in the denominator, it you know I really it wasn't necessary for me to put an extra parenthesis. It's all inside these points. And then here, right, because you, you shouldn't be using calculators, you just click. So x1 is that minus the average. x2 is that minus the average. x3 is that minus the average. Four, five, clicking the minus sign next to the zero. And lo and behold, that is my uncertainty in the mean. The only difference between measurements, so that would be the uncertainty yeah. in all of these things. Yeah. Is, there you go. Oh, over here. Yeah. So the only difference is a tw instead of 20, we have four. So these are the two equations that we're using for part one. And then we scroll down to what we use for the most part throughout the rest of the lab. Well, you, you, you do use uh, three a lot. Equation three, four, we don't really use um, Here it is, it's called uncertainty propagation. So this means if I measure, let's say I measure the length, but my ruler is really messed up, it's off by like four centimeters. Um, that would be a constant that is uh, C. So if I'm measuring the length plus some messed up ruler, the uncertainty of that thing is just the uncertainty of the length. Likewise, if I, for instance, um, later later on, it will be like the uncertainty of the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. If I let 
A, a for a second. If I let A, a be a R squared, C, C constant, constant is pi. pi. So what I do what is I, I do just is say pi, pi multiplied by the uncertainty of R squared. If I wanted to I actually get the uncertainty of R squared, I can scroll down to 11. 11. That tells me that the uncertainty of some quantity, because I didn't measure the radius, right? I measured just the radius. That's what propagates me. Like, if I measure the length, but I actually want the uncertainty in area, the area is the length and the width. I measured those, but I didn't measure the area. So I calculated it. So I measured length and width, but I calculated the area. Um, and so in that, in length and width, I would do this. A is length, C is width. Sigma A is uncertainty of width, length, uncertainty of width, and then the length itself. Over here for R squared, I would have two, just R is two minus one is one, and R to the first power is R. And then I have the uncertainty of R, which I definitely get, right, because I measured that. Um, well, not, actually not directly, because if you see here, you're measuring the diameter and you're dividing by two. So how do you handle that? Up here. If what I'm measuring is the diameter, the diameter divided by two, C is one half. The uncertainty of the radius then would be one half times the uncertainty of the diameter. Let's see, what else do we need? Um, a particularly hard one is the uncertainty of the area of the trapezoid. Um, actually, let me let me uh, show you what this this means. First. When it says, "Does your measurement agree with some other measurement so within uncertainty?" What that means is result. Uh, so this measurement of D would be this, and agree with part one. So that would be D from this, your average. Does it agree to within uncertainty? Means you take this result. Uh, well, um, let's do this one because I, I, I actually calculated this. That, that one was uh, easy. I just wrote what equation you use to get it. Um, so what I would do was I would say this so equals the actual measurement minus the uncertainty and equals the actual measurement plus the uncertainty. And the question is asking me, is this value in that measurement? So my answer here would be no, because it's not a little bit outside of my, my minimum and maximum. So I didn't get them to agree to the uncertainty. The other way you could do it um, would be to do the same thing the other way. Take this, minus this, this, plus this, and see if that matches. Um, it likely won't because one of them didn't, but maybe it will. Um, here, what we're doing is we're reversing the order of this equation. So if D equals M over A, what I can do is take the A and multiply it on both sides so that it, the equation reads AD equals M. And then I can divide both sides by D to have A equals M over D. So that's what we're doing over here. I have A equals M divided by D. And so I'm getting in this, in this part, we are actually calculating it. And then we're using our result here. If you notice, I didn't actually type that. So green are things that are like uh, done, like done for you. Um, I don't know why that says that. It should be that M. Um, and then we'll use equation 10, which is um, the division one. So this is exactly this right here. So what I'm doing is I'm using the density, which is part one, the whole idea was to get the density of cardboard. And then for the rest of the lab, we're using the density of cardboard. We're weighing whatever shape we have and saying, okay, based on that, what must the area of my cardboard? Uh, and then what you're doing is comparing those two values, the actual measure and the density of the, from the density. One particularly hard uncertainty though, is this one, which looks obviously crazy. Let me go to how I wrote it out yesterday. Uh, 
Um, another thing in Excel, let me show you how pi is written. You could, of course, type 3.14, or you type equals pi, capital pi, and then two open parentheses. I don't know why. Um, that's just how Excel uses the number pi. And then little star for multiplication, that is just eight. And then uh, your radius right here. Square. Um, the other one, uh, for, for at least for part one, where you're doing, uh, you measure the length and width. Um, what I did was I measured all the length and width before I made it, which was annoying. Then I lost track of which rectangle was which. Um, so as you do this, do length, width, mass. Length, width, mass. After that, uh, those little tips and tricks. Um, let me get rid of that. So uh, from the lab manual, we know that the area of the trapezoid, I'm not, I'm not gonna have to derive these things. We're just gonna take them for granted. Um, the area of a trapezoid is the bottom, the, the flat bottom, the flat top divided by two times the height of it. That's the, it's usually like the left or the right side that's a 90 degree angle. Um, so if we want to take the uncertainty of this, it's actually pretty common because we have three quantities that have uncertainty. So, so what we do, what we do is, is sigma, sigma is, uh, is uh, just symbol for uncertainty. So I'm taking the uncertainty of A right here. Right I just this in algebra and uh, distributed the H to each of those quantities and made it a sum. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the uncertainty of a sum. So I head over to my manual and I think it's equation eight. Yeah. So if I have the uncertainty of a sum, what I do is I do the square root of the uncertainty of each of them, them squared. Square. The sum of them. So here, here you can see I'm, I'm taking, so this is A, this is B, and I'm doing the uncertainty of A squared plus the uncertainty of B squared. Then I have, what do I have? I'm taking out this two. So you can see from equation seven that two for one half is constant. The uncertainty, the uncertainty of pi h, of b1h, and b2h two 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 over two, two is just, is just one, half one half the uncertainty of b1h. One one Remember, this is still all in that square bracket. And then and what then I'm doing, doing is, is I'm using equation uh, nine, which is the multiplication. So this is b1, this is h. So I multiply b1 h square root the uncertainty of b1 over b1, the uncertainty of h over h, both of those squared underneath the square root. And all of this is still in those brackets from the addition rule. Here, I'm just squaring, and I'm taking that two, and I'm bringing it to the one half to make it one fourth. And then I do the same thing here. I take that two and bring it to that, that part because that's the rule. Uh, powers distributed. Like if, if you have A, B inside a parenthesis and you square them, uh, you can do that. It's instead X, B, uh, Y, B. So what I'm doing in the algebra step is I'm distributing the power. So now I have one fourth to B one squared to A squared, and a square root is uh, the power over here is a one half. So if I multiply a one half and a, um, like here, like if I have a one half here and a two, that goes to one. So this thing is just in brackets because remember it's still a sum. So the whole formula that you have to put in Excel is that giant thing, which looks like this. So I have my square root around the whole thing. So this parenthesis here matches with that parenthesis. Jesus. Parenthesis there. Um, and then I have one fourth B1 squared H squared. And then my bracket, the hard, the hard square bracket right there. Um, and then I have a plus for this other one. Same, same thing. And that, that is the hard square bracket outside that I get. Um, in general, if you are questioning whether your uh, uncertainty is correct, um, if this were 10, that would not be good because that means I'm 
of the same order of magnitude as my quantity. So if the quantity is A, um, I'm measuring this thing and it's, it's in the 40s. Uh, you know, this is, I was measuring everything in centimeters. Centimeters, you don't really have to put this. It's, I mean, obviously in your lab, you have to write 5.2 centimeters, but you don't have to go into that centimeters there. Um, so, um, so if, if 43, 43 is my answer, answer. let's just do 100. If 100 is my answer, answer. having an uncertainty of, of uh, 10 is bad, bad but it's not bad. Bad. Um, Having an uncertainty of 1 is much better because that's, that's true. true. And by order of magnitude, I mean um, like when you, you have, uh, there's like uh, 0. Maybe base 10, is that what I'm saying? No, not really. Um, if you, you know, if you do um, 10, it's kind of like uh, the, the center of the um, metric system. Uh, prefixes, yeah, prefixes. Like milla, centa, whatever. So if you are measuring something in centimeters, 10 to the negative two, um, that just means like you take right, you're taking the, the decimal point and moving it twice. Um, you shouldn't have if, if your measurement is in centimeters, your uncertainty should be um, well. To be fair, there's actually something missing from this, which is like oh no, okay, never mind, it's deca. Uh, so uh, my forty millimeters is actually four decimeters. So if I have an uncertainty in centimeters. That's okay. Um, if I have something over 10, 10 that's, a that's a little weird. weird. Um, that means, that like, means like, 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 it would be like taking, like, 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 the uncertainty, like, like this area, area right now is, is uh, that's 10. 10. That is, is about seven. seven. So this is this 70, 70 centimeters. centimeters. Square. If I said it was, was um, 80, 80 or 60, 60, that's a significant difference because that's like, that would, that would be, be um, it would be it would like, be like that. that. Like that's a huge, huge difference, especially, especially for something so small, small, small. That's a huge difference. difference. Um, so, so if your uncertainties are like, like half, half, a quarter, quarter anything, anything less, less or anything, anything above, above, yeah, yeah, above, above one, so like you shoot, shoot for, for something, something at least, at least uh, a tenth and of what you're measuring. So, so 40, 40 the, the maximum, maximum uncertainty I should have is four. four. Um, obviously, obviously, it's way less than that because that. I did it um, like the formula correctly. But if something is like, like if, yeah, so if this uncertainty was four, I should be wary. Like that's the maximum if you're talking about. If it was 10, I definitely would not. Um, other than that, our last part of the lab. So, you just to give you an idea, I'm all this talking stuff. Is like way too much for lab zero. What I what I would usually do is do that at the beginning of lab one, um, so you know like what is expected of you at the lab. Um, but because people were struggling a lot um, yesterday, I, I want to like, give you guys uh, some clues. Um, where did I put it? Here. Um, so this is at the end of lab. You are, um, I guess, another. Um, uh, um, another part of lab is measuring uh, these things. It's a parabola. It's called parabola. Um, these things. And when it asks you right here for total width, um, the width, so the height is this. Those are easy to measure because as you add them, the height is just the, the new one that we did. But the, the uh, total width is for one, it would be this, so that's like six, but for two, it's both of them, so it would be that way combined. Uh, and as you add them together, it's like that. Um, that's just a, you know, something else. Um, and then x squared is, you know, just squaring those quantities. x to the three is, is taking that quantity and doing it to the third. Height, that's easy, because every time you add one, it's just the height of the polygon. It's you know, this side right here. Um, mass is the mass of all of them. So here, here I'm putting I'm this one on the scale, scale this, 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 this,
Uh, I was in the area again. Oh, right. This was a hard column. Um, I didn't understand what was required of me here. Um, what you're doing is you're taking like here, where you're, you're using the density that you got from the very beginning of the lab. What you're doing is you're taking the mass that you calculated and getting the area from that calculation. So here you can see the mass divided by the density of hard work you're going to be in the lab to get the area. And then, then I'm doing, I'm doing two, two different, different plotting, 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 plotting. plotting. So what I do is I head over to here. Head to the plotting tool, which is here, and I am plotting y equals a x squared. And so when you when it says in the lab manual to plot um, uh, plot y, y versus x. x. That means, that means y, y goes on, on y axis and x squared goes on the x axis. Or vice versa, or, or similarly here, here, a goes on the y axis, y -axis and x cubed goes on the y axis. Y -axis. Y -axis. Um, and, um, and so, so what you're doing here is, is essentially bringing the equations for a parabola. Y, y equals a squared, squared so that means like, like for a given, given x, x if you were to do this on a graph, graph um, if you if you're given, given x, x y, y is some number a, a times, times x, x squared. Squared. Um, um, what the what other equation is, is a, a that says given this width, width x to the x, 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 if I cube it, and multiply it by a over three, then that's an area under this part. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm morphing these two equations to y equals mx plus b, because that I can grab and get a slope of. So here, I'm morphing this equation to y equals, um, for some reason, the plotting tool gives you it in um, an a. I'll just show you what they look like. The, the, the letter the instead of y, y and x, x plus b, they, why is it opening again? Uh, that program took a lot of open. Um, um, but yeah, but for, yeah some for some reason, reason the, the like y equals y mx plus b in this line tool is y equals ax plus b, which is just annoying for our purposes. Uh, this, for this instance, is a program, is a program that you can use if you want to get like, like Extra credit, extra credit by making, by making uh, apparatus, apparatus, like the apparatus, apparatus section, section, like for instance, when you do the standing the wave, wave like motors and, and, and things that are moving. So if I zoom in on this, by clicking that, you can see that A is the slope here, and the equation that we're matching it to is Y equals AX. And so I do the same thing um, because this correspondence is so easy. Y equals Y, X equals X. My A is, is the slope. So then I could read off from this graph what the A of that particular equation is. And similarly, the area, now I'm doing Y equals area, X to the third on the X axis, and then my slope would be A over three. And so what I do is I multiply the slope slope three, and that gives me another value of A. And so the objective in the very last part of the lab is to match those A. So you would get, from the graph, yeah. you immediately know that A is, is that value. value. And then and the, the other one, one. You, um, uh, also, I have no idea where it is. Ignore that. I have no idea. I think I, I replaced it here. Um, so yeah, you can just ignore all that. I have no idea what that means. Um, the uncertainty you'll get from the graph. Um, and this one is wrong because I, um, what's the problem too? I didn't put the uncertainties in. Is that a question? That's not it. Um, but here, so you would have like um, area one plus minus uncertainty, area two plus minus uncertainty. Oh, I'm sorry, this is x cubed, uh, uncertainty of x cubed, uncertainty of x cubed, uncertainty of area, uncertainty. and then your uh, the slope on that graphic um, would be would be accurate. So that would be your uncertainty of it. Uh, but then what you're doing is just uh, you take the slope of the a times x um, cube graph and you multiply it by three because that's the relationship between little a and big a. 
So that's basically the whole lab. Um, I wanted to really run you, run you guys through everything we we're supposed to do because um, lab one took a little bit too long. It may have just been that I had to do lab zero and one with them, um, but this also gives me the opportunity to send them this as well. Uh, like you, you guys will get this Zoom recording and they'll know it. Um, and also the other, the other thing I mentioned to them um, was discussion questions as you go down the lab report. Usually what I'll do, in, you know, they were so um, rushed for time last time, I didn't say it verbally. But what I'll do like halfway through the lab, um, because, you know, as soon as lab starts, you guys have to ask questions, and if you won't know what to do, that's what my intro is usually for. Um, but once you get to the middle of lab, you have to calm down, and I don't have to help as much, um, then I'll start reading these and say, like, uh, which one do I think is coolest? And usually, like this week, we find one, because I thought one of them was cool. Um, but there are like usually eight or ten questions, and I just like pick one and I assign it, and then you you know put it at the very like before the conclusion uh, ending your report. Um, and also, I was you know wondering what what the, the people's preferences were, so I'll send this out to you guys. As well. Um, Zoom or in person, uh, office hours or gold. Like I have two hours in office hours. If you want to do like one hour of Zoom, one hour of in person. You want to do it. Uh, where's uh, where's 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 I think it's one floor up, up. whereas yeah, the, the um, help room, room, which I think the rich would prefer, the help room is because, and I, I, I think I would prefer it too, because you guys could get to interact with people in 133, in other 130 or 121 sections and make friends that way. Um, or I also, um, I have an office in Tabler. Um, if for some reason a lot of you live in Tabler, um, or you, you, know, like you want to do two hours. Straight, straight, you want to do two, two sections, sections, sections on different days. And then I send them this, which is like a basically, basically answering this question. question. And then this, and which is like a, a like you draw over what's good for you. For you. you could be like, okay, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And then you send a send response to me. Um, yeah, so um, I'll, yeah, send, so you I'll send you guys the corresponding, the corresponding one on this, one this where, I, where I, I send you the recorded thing um, that we just did. Um, any questions? So, <clears throat> I guess the whole purpose of incorporating Excel in your calculations, but you really prefer if we just use that uh, as our mode of calculating opposed to just doing it on the side or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you, you'll, you'll, you will definitely, you will definitely mess, mess up if you do it on the side, um, just because, because, because it's so much, so much easier, easier to, to see your, your error. error. Like, if I did this in my calculator, calculator. Um, you, and, and it wouldn't be like, I can't. I can't I mean, really really it, you know what I mean? Um, so it's here and it's just much easier. Um, and whereas like in the, in the rubric in the intro video, you saw like the, um, uh, the, the latex uh, overly for like extra credit if you wanted, um, that is definitely extra credit because like you don't, you should not be you know forced to learn it if you don't want to like go to grad school or, or do research or anything. But if you do want to do research, I, that's why I offer it as much as I because I think it's very useful um, to learn how to type things like that. Because every single science article in physics, math, biology, anything is written in like that. Um, so just learning like how to do that for extra credit. Um, but the Excel, like that, that's something that you need to do in like, regardless of if you go to grad school. So that's definitely like not a extra credit. That's like a require. Um, yeah. And yeah, so you'll just like, you'll submit, you'll take this and you'll download it as an Excel and, you know, submit it with the, the assignment, in, like in addition to the, the PDF or whatever. Um, and you can like, uh, like people can type these equations in Word. I don't know how, they, for me, they only end up very ugly. Um, for the majority of people, they end up ugly. But some students were like, they were amazing lab reports in Word with like LaTeX type. Equations. So I don't know how they did that. Uh, but apparently, you know, maybe it's my 2011 computer that doesn't have a good Word version. But who knows? Um, I mean, I know we have math on. But maybe I can just scream everyone's name just to try to learn things. 
Because it, like, it, I, I realized I didn't do that last year, and like, it took me like three weeks to learn everyone's name after like I upgraded their stuff. Because then I'd be like, oh, okay, I see names and stuff. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, I literally like I, I, I did this yesterday, and I don't even. Um, I don't remember anyone, so it's not really going to help a ton. Um, let me stop and stop the recording. And so, like, since it's recorded, 